<laughs> Welcome everybody to the next stage. My name is Yvette del Toro uh, and I'm going to be your host for this evening as the casting director for City Lights and the new managing director for Teatro Vision. I am absolutely privileged in joining in conversation with our amazing guests from our current co-production with Teatro Vision, Miss You Like Hell. So I think let's just start by introducing everybody that is here from the show. Um, I don't know, does anybody want to pipe up first? Alicia, I see you have your <laughs> Um, my name is Alicia Adami, my pronouns are they, them, and I play Olivia. I'm just going to keep poking everybody. Naomi, you're like right next to me in the cameras. Cool. Hi, friends. My name is Naomi Evans, and I play Pearl. Hello. And Jessica. Hello. My name is Jessica Osegueda, pronouns she, her, and I play Beatriz. Welcome, welcome, and Rodrigo. Hello, everyone. Rodrigo Garcia here, pronouns he, him, él, and I'm the stage director and artistic director of Teatro Vision. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone, again. And this actually leads us right into my next point. Rodrigo, as the director, I would absolutely love for you to give us um, a brief overview of the show and just I don't know what you love about this production. Anything that stands out to you? Of course. Well, the story of Miss You Like Hell is a story of a mother and a daughter, Beatriz and Olivia, who happen to be apart because of some circumstances related to immigration and to custody. And so, this time, the mother appears at Olivia's window at 4 a.m. and they embark on a journey of discovery of themselves and each other across the country to California. And Miss You Like Hell, and, and in this journey, they encounter several individuals who remind them what, what is really meaningful about life and about family and about forgiveness. And so in this discovery, we'll learn the story of Beatriz, who is an undocumented immigrant. And for me, the best thing about this play in, is that it humanizes the story of undocumented immigrants. We learned that Beatriz is not only an undocumented immigrant woman, but she's a mother she is someone who has to have, uh, who, who had to give up the opportunity to be with her daughter because of the fear of being deported and, and losing it altogether. So um, that's for, for me, the power of this story, the humanizing aspect that Beatriz is, it's not longer an undocumented immigrant, but now we have a name and we have a story tied to it. And that's that's the main thing that I love about Michelle I Hell. Yeah, it really speaks to the human experience. And it, um, I mean, I, I personally was a mess when I saw it on opening night. I like awkwardly went up to the cast and was telling everybody just how moved I was. Um, because it has so much heart and it really reminds you of the connections that we form with family, with the people we meet along the way and just how difficult a circumstance like um, Olivia and Beatrices can really be. Um, so thank you so much for that. Uh, actually, we have a little treat for everybody because there are some new photos that have not been released yet that we're gonna share with everybody right now. Uh, so, Becky, if you would be so willing to share these photos, we can just go through them and <laughs> I know how exciting. Okay, I don't know if we can see it. It's very, there we go. So this is a fun one. This is everybody on the road trip. I can see all the very happy faces. I love that. Um, so this one I actually makes me think of I'd love to hear from each of the artists, like what the show means to each of you and um, 
I don't know what you hope audiences have taken from it, what you hope more audiences will take from this. Um, and like, what have you heard from audiences so far? Whoever wants to jump in first. I can jump in real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, hi. Um, something that really stands out to me or that I have, as you know, some people do, I have a pretty, no, I wouldn't say complicated relationship. I think there <laughs> I think there are moments where my re relationship with my mother can be complicated. So what I really love about this show is the mother daughter dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, and I've really, I feel like I harnessed a lot of, of my mother and putting myself in her shoes and what it means to be a mother. Although, you know, I'm not a mother, but I also know what it means to be a daughter um, and to, to have that love. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that from both sides, one doesn't quite know about the other. You know, we make assumptions about our mother, our parents, um, and sometimes not understanding where the other side is coming from, if that makes sense. Um, and so that is something that I, I, I really enjoyed about this piece. And um, I'm hoping that my mother can um, see this on uh, when it moves to the Mexican Heritage Plaza, because I think she's going to see a lot of us um, in this in this production as well. So that's that was something that was really fun to play with and to to get to experience on stage. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I really hope that she can see that those elements that you pulled from your relationship. That's that adds a different layer to everything, certainly. Anyone else have any thoughts? Sure. Um, so I wasn't that familiar with the show when I took it on, but the more I read the script, the more I felt really lucky to be playing Olivia because I feel very connected to her experience. Um, my mom and I are very close, but I went through a lot of like struggles with mental illness in high school. And I know what it was like to just feel so alone even if you had people around you and to be like looking for that connection on the internet, especially in like the earlier days of the internet with blogs and everything, I was just like, wow, I really feel connected to this, this teenager. And it's kind of cathartic to relive that um, because, you know, she really does come around. I talked about this in the in-person talk back, but you know, the first act, you cannot tell a 16 year old that they do not know the answer to everything. Cause they're just like, oh no, I, I, are, I don't have anything left to learn, like I'm an adult. Um, but she really does, you know, go on this journey. And um, speaking to humanizing, you know, the immigrant experience, uh, I appreciate that this, well, oh, hmm, actually, let me not say what I was going to, because there might be people here who have not seen the show, so I don't want to give any spoilers. But oh. um, I just appreciate the the humanizing of people and then giving a more a realistic look of what what it's really like to live this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Ooh, I love that. But I had to catch myself there. <laughs> that just means that whoever is here that has not seen the show, like they really have to get their butts down to one of our venues and see the yes. show before it's gone. Yes, um, I love this extra photo that we've shared here so you can see exactly those moments right of like do i go with my mom and <laughs> i love the lighting for this too it's been it's just so so moving um yeah it's so it actually reminds me you and uh jess have worked together before definitely not as mother daughter but if anyone has seen other shows at city lights you will remember that jess and alicia have worked on our stage before uh, they were both in the reboot of Coded when we came back from uh, the shutdown and you were playing Friends. <laughs> so how has this experience been for the two of you being in a completely different dynamic? Well, um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was super excited when I, because I, I didn't know who would be playing my mom. And when I found out it was Jessica, I was like, oh yeah, like this is going to be a blast because like she was so fun to work with in Coded, um, which is funny because in Coded, I think you were playing a character that was a little bit younger than me and now you're playing my mom. It's, you know, the magic of theater. Um, but it, it's it's really a testament to like your talent that like I, even though we are not far apart in age, like you really capture this like maternal like vibe and like love and emotion that is like, 
I, I get on stage and I forget that like we're, you know, closer in age than mother daughter would be like it's 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 really beautiful and I feel I feel really lucky there's times where I'm like oh my gosh this reminds me this like reminds me of me and my mom it's wild oh my gosh oh thank you and you know likewise when I found out that you would be playing my daughter I was just I was excited and so game um I think I was you know I think um taking on the character of Beatrice is very, you know, in a sense, scary. I mean, for anyone, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a lot. I mean, not just Beatrice, but Olivia too, but, you know, having such a supportive cast and, and knowing that you were my daughter, like it just, I was excited to share the stage with you. I had already seen you, you know, worked with you um, on Coded and then saw you in The Hollow. You're an amazing, you know, actor. And um, I just felt so, it could have been, I could have felt more scared, but I wasn't, I felt at peace because of all the pieces and the people, people around us. So, so I'm, I'm so um, happy to share the stage with you again. and just excited to, to do much more. <laughs> Yay. I'm sorry. I have to be so mean to you. Sometimes I feel really <laughs> bad about it. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> Oh, it's so good to hear that from both of you. You were both in um, a very unique position for this show because you both uh, jumped in and Naomi to some degree as well. And I'm going to get back to you. Um, you were both joining the show at a very different time than everybody else in the cast. Um, how was that experience for the two of you? It's, I mean, as an actor myself, it is mind boggling the the task that just the entire cast pulled together but also the two of you stepping into these roles at the time that you did um so I'd love to hear a little more about that for anyone that doesn't know um Jessica and Alicia took on the roles about a week week and a half before we opened the show and you cannot tell I was their opening and it was like they have been here from the beginning they're both amazing. And yeah, please share any insights of how that is. Rodrigo's clapping for you. The director absolutely agrees. <laughs> so yeah, share more about that for us. Uh, so I'll go. Um, I'm not going to like lie and be like, oh my gosh, no, I totally knew I could do it. I was terrified. But <laughs> once I like had the first rehearsal and I met everyone, I was like, oh my gosh, like everybody is so incredibly kind and supportive. Like I was getting hugs. They were like, oh my gosh, we're so happy you're here. Like everyone's energy was so high and so positive. That was like, okay, all right, we can do this. Um, but it was honestly, um, I'd recently been laid off. So I had a lot of free time. So it was like a full work day before rehearsals of like, let's study the songs, let's study the book and run lines and get everything in there. So. I was just lucky things lined up where I had like a big chunk of time to really dive into it, but um, I couldn't have done it without everybody involved in the production because they've been just mwah, chef's kiss. Wonderful. Um, prior to taking on the role of Beatrice, um, I was part of the ensemble. So I was actually um, the lawyer and the ensemble. And so I had been in rehearsals from, you know, from the beginning to, to up to that point. And so I feel like I had, although, I, you know, I wasn't doing the lines or, you know, studying that particular role, as part of ensemble, you really soak in a lot of the action and all the lines, the songs, it, you, you hear it every day. You're at where we were at almost like every rehearsal um, for the most part. And so I, I feel like I soaked in a lot that I didn't know I had soaked in. And so when it came time to actually look at the script and study, um, I there was more in there than I had realized there was. And just to speak on Alicia's point of like the community, because again, like I, I think that is a big part of how we were able to, to pull this together is the immense support that we had from everyone involved. There's just so much love and, and, and support that I don't think, I, I just think really helped. And, and you know, I've, I'd worked with Teatro Vision before, great group of people, anybody that steps foot on that stage, like it's just great, talented and just good people. And then working with City Lights, like I already like, you know, love the people at City Lights. And so just ha to have this mesh with both Teatro Vision and City Lights was just like the perfect combination. And, and so it's like, oh yeah, of course, no doubt that like these two theater companies coming together would provide such 
a community of people and such a loving space that I think is really the magic that made this happen. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I absolutely feel the same way. Clearly, as I said, I work for both companies now and everyone is a dream to work with on both sides. I feel like this is the most beautiful marriage of these two companies and I'm just kind of caught in the middle of it. And I'm so glad that both of you had that kind of experience that you had the support, the trust from everyone and the, the confidence that that inspired in each of you. Um, to pull off this amazing, beautiful show. Um, and Alicia, we have another photo of you right there. <laughs> uh, it's just such a great shot. I love the wig. <laughs> That's Is that one of yours? Actually, I was wondering about that. It is not one of mine. Um, it was added kind of at the last minute. Um, so I think we just thought Olivia just needed, I mean, Rodrigo can, can speak to that, but like just a little something, you know, and it's uh, Melissa bought it, but a fun little a fun little connection is that Jessica the ends of her hair are purple so like if you like look closely because they're like a little bit darker like we both have purple hair which is kind of a fun little you know connected even though we didn't know we were connected sort of thing but yeah I love the wig I love that it looks so good and yes I love the connection between mother daughter shout out to Melissa Sanchez our costume designer absolutely amazing and I see that the mal is there. I know Karen Leonard, our props designer, is also on the call with us. Those tamales always look so good. And Ricardo's song, Tamales, iconic, <laughs> which is why we had tamales at opening night. You cannot go without having some tamales there. <laughs> um, if, I, if I can, if I can just add quickly, yeah. when we, you know, this this is just days before we opened. When, when uh, Melissa and I were talking about Olivia's costume for Alicia, we look at the hair and I personally thought, you know, she looks so put together, so like sharp and clean. And Olivia, it's a little bit different. Olivia is a little bit messy in a sense that, you know, she struggles with a lot of things. So she, she Alicia looks so beautiful put together that we're like, let's let's give it a little something, you know. And and of course, uh, of course, uh, Melissa's choice of the hair and the cut. When I saw it, I was like, that's Olivia, you know. That's what represents this girl who who would not take time to get her her cut perfect and looking, uh, you know, just very put together. But it gives it also that tender look that, that Alicia brings to the character, which is, I think is beautiful. Absolutely. It really gives something else to the character. And it, yeah, it, there's that contrast, like you said, between the two, Alicia, you know, as you normally walk through the world, they are, you know, they're themselves like this, but this gives Olivia something different, which is just so cool. Um, I'm going to go back to Naomi now. Actually, Naomi hasn't been with us since, oh my goodness, West Side Story. It's been a long time. You've done some amazing work in other places since then, but we're so happy and thrilled that you would join us. You also had a very interesting joining uh, to the show, and you actually uh, split the role of Pearl with someone else. Uh, shout out to Kennedy Dawson, who's our alternate Pearl. But Naomi will be playing Pearl for the remainder of the run. So I'd love to hear more about, I don't know, your experience joining the show. <laughs> yeah. No, um, it's like Yvette said, I was also a latecomer. I think I started a little over a month after everyone else. And kind of as Alicia and Jessica shared, it was that coming in, can I do this sort of feeling? But I was determined to make it work um I've said before like when you contacted me about the show I literally the first thing I did was google what does Pearl sing and when I listened to Yellowstone I was like okay great I'm in <laughs> I love this song for anyone that hasn't seen it it's it's really an incredible song it's very different um it's probably the most unique musical theater thing I've done um but it definitely struck a chord with me and coming in was interesting because I started and then I think a week later Kennedy started 
and so there was a lot of, you know, you'll teach her, she'll shadow you sort of thing. And I remember telling her, I was like, I will help you absolutely as much as I can, but I feel like it's a bit like the blind leading the blind. Like <laughs> there was more than a couple of moments where she was like, what do we do her? Or what do we sing here? And I was like, girl, I don't know, but we'll figure it out together. Like <laughs> we're, we're just going to strap in and hang on and lean on each other and learn it together. And she was a delight to work with. She's so talented. Um, and uh, it was really cute, like, especially when we did like designer run and some of the tech stuff, like we literally stood together side by side. And I remember at one point someone asking me like, were they really both going to be there? And they're like, we were like, no, we're one person. I mean, I know we're two right now, but only one of us will be here at a time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, So that was interesting, but I mean, obviously it worked. Um, it was a lot of fun. And kind of, again, like Alicia said, when I joined, it was just instantaneous. Everyone was like, what can we do? What do you need? We're here to help. We're so excited to have you. It was just I don't know, like immediate warmth and love. And everyone was so passionate about the show. And that's, I mean, I love that. And I've loved my experience. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. We actually have um, this photo. I believe it is from Yellowstone, isn't it? And it uh, is. Yeah, I love the kind of like bluesy sort of jazzy like R&B that this song has. The texture of it is so lovely. And yeah, it was one of the first songs that stood out to me that I was like, "Ooh, this is good." And so when I was looking for somebody to fill the role, I was like, "Naomi. Naomi's got this." <laughs> so, it was very you. Exciting for you to jump in. Um and if anybody, you know, gets to see the show from now on. Naomi will be there this whole time. If you were also lucky to catch Kennedy, Kennedy was with us for the opening weekend. Um, and she hopefully will see her around also. She is currently a student at Santa Clara University. Um, but yeah, have you ever split the role with somebody like that? I have not actually. Um, I mean, it's funny because I haven't really done understudy things since high school. Like at my high school, they always would do understudy then you they have understudy night where everyone who was in, or did the one performance but even then it, again it wasn't necessarily splitting it you just kind of you were you were always there um you know you went to the vocal rehearsals you went to the staging rehearsals it was like learning it with them as opposed to after the fact or when they didn't know it so this was a first for me yeah, I, I don't think I've ever been in that situation. I've been in the understudy situation, certainly. And like Jessica and Alicia now have had like the ultimate kind of understudy experience. But this is a, such a unique sort of situation with Pearl. And I I love that both of you were like, we're one person. We're figuring it out together and creating this character <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. Well, well thank so you. So it was great. And like Kennedy was so sweet and again, both of us were just like, we're, we're in it. We're here. I've got you, you've got me. Um, and it was really, really something special. Right. Yeah. That's all you can ask for in these kinds of situations is just getting along and having those creative juices flowing together. All right. So actually we have a different photo. Unfortunately, Joel and Ken are not with us, but I do want to highlight it because it is, it is such a sweet other storyline and Becky has pulled it up here for us. So in the story, um, while Beatrice and Olivia are on their road trip, they meet these two bikers who are in the process of trying to get married in every single state. And it is such a sweet little detour that we take with these two characters. Um, I am going to share something that Joel said because I know he'd be absolutely happy to share this but when I first offered him the role he's the one on the far left in this photo um he was absolutely thrilled and he confided that he has never been able to play an openly gay man on stage and so when I offered him this role he was like I'm so excited that I finally get to play somebody like me on stage and just be myself and he's like I I've done musical theater I've been in numerous plays and I've never gotten to be me on stage and I ugh, I remember opening that email and reading it and I was like so close to tears and he he was just so thrilled about it so um I just needed to share that because I I haven't stopped thinking about it and it was just so so important it really reminds you um what theater really brings to all of us and how 
it's important how we can see ourselves in multiple ways, in different ways of representation. And so this is one of them. And I just wanted to highlight it because it's so sweet. <laughs> um, and I also have a different photo. There's, it shows some of our great projections that Spencer Matubang has made. When this one came up, I was so, I was like shocked in, in, and this is early on in the show, if anyone has not seen it, I was shocked. But again, that this is where the, like the tears started to form a little bit because I, and I'm getting a little emotional now. I didn't expect to see it and it just ignited something so deep in me. And I really want to talk more about this because I believe this is right when Jessica sings um, like calling upon the feminine divine and calling her ancestors. And so I would love to hear more about who who are, is in this image. And, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, some of these people are incredibly iconic. Um, Rodrigo, do you have anything to share with us about how this image um, was created and who we can see in the background there? Of course, uh, and, and this is also going back to what you asked about what was so special about this play. And, and for me personally, the fact that this story elevates the experience of a female character, and in this case, two female characters, in such a dignifying way is so powerful in itself. So in this first scene, this is a prayer this is kind of like a um, like a prologue to the whole play where the mother it's praying before seeing her daughter after four years of not seeing her. So she's calling to the force of the ancestors, her ancestors. And so, from the from the earliest stages of the production, we uh, I had asked the 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 actress portraying Beatriz to do it something more personal. I wanted the 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 actress playing the role to provide us with some pictures, some photos of her own ancestors. Jessica coming a week before opening, <laughs> there was not a lot of time to find a lot of pictures, although you can find some pictures that maybe she can tell us who they are. But in thinking of who these ancestors are and, and the whole meaning about what family is, family in a way is defined by blood ties, but it's also fine by the relationships we develop directly or indirectly. And in this case, a lot of these characters are remarkable women from Mexico, because she's Mexican, who have gone like on the spectrum of, of experiences. Uh, the older woman that you see, they're kind of looking to, to Beatriz. She's a, a famous, famous healer that many famous people travel to see her because she would cure with mushrooms. Her name is Maria Sabina, and, and there has been studies written about her healing powers. The, the woman with the sombrero at the, the very center is one of the few images that we have of women fighting in the revolution because unfortunately history was written by men and only men appear in those pictures. So for me, this is really powerful because these are women that were also mothers, that were also sisters and that fought with rifles for the justice for everybody. And we have Frida Kahlo, of course, uh, an artist. We have Maria Felix, who was a famous uh, Mexican diva. And we have many other people that I will not go one by one. But again, what we wanted to do is to bring all these forces that Beatriz is walking on the, on the footsteps 
of all these women and many more, including her family. Uh, from the beginning, when I see this picture, I get like, oh my God, and I can't help it. It's just so powerful because I know the meaning of all these women, uh, but I'm sure many, many more people would, you know, would get that feeling as well when they see it. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, you talking about it is making me so emotional. I saw in the chat that Jessica mentioned that um, her mother and her grandmother are in the photo as well. Uh, can you tell us kind of where they are? I can take a guess, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on all the way at the bottom, on the, the bottom left, that is my mother with the glasses on. Um, <laughs> that's my mother. And then on the top, on the top um, right, um uh that is my my grandmother when she was um when she was very young um and i'd never seen this before because i never get to see it i always wondered if the pictures were did get to be used or how it was used and this is just ah oh, just so so beautiful so well done i'm just in awe this is this is amazing this is a highlight of my evening um thank you so much for sharing this photo yeah, no, thank you for sharing this because it makes it so personal. It makes it so a part of you and the cast and the work that is being put into this show. And, and like I said, it, I felt the same way, like Rodrigo. I saw that come up and as it fades in, in the mountain shape, uh, which was pointed out also in the chat, the fact that it is in this mountain shape is also just, I, I don't know, it's just so amazing. And as it like fades in, it was kind of like, the music is rising at that moment as well. And it just creates that wave of emotion in you. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> because it truly does hold all of these meanings that Rodrigo was pointing out. Um, just all of these amazing figures, uh, whether they were known to the entire world or they are known to you because they mean something specific to you and your life, but truly the backbone of our society and of our culture. So I, I was absolutely thrilled that these women are highlighted there for all of your audiences to be seeing. Thank you so much for sharing that insight. <laughs> um, okay, so actually now I think I'm going to take a look at the chat here. If anyone has any questions or if anyone else has anything else to mention that they'd like to bring up, please feel free throw it in the chat or unmute yourselves and um, let us know what you think or if you have any questions. Oh, Carol actually would like to know what everyone's saw. Does anyone have a favorite song in the show? We already heard some love for Yellowstone. My favorite kind of changes. <laughs> I'll jump in and say I really enjoy hearing because I can't quite see it, but listening to Alicia sing bibliography um, and then with the ensemble as well. It's such it's it like it the, from a technical standpoint, you've got all these like elements coming together and then her voice and the state of mind that the character is in. Um, is just so well done. So it's, I never get to see it, but it yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah, kudos to Alicia. They just like jumped in and learned that song and I do not envy it because it is going backwards through the whole alphabet. It is a very hard song, what a feat. Yeah, that I will was one. I me. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You go, okay. <laughs> I was just going to say that was one that took me a long time to learn. Like even when I got to being off book, that was one where I still was kind of like, I don't know what's happening. Um, I got there eventually, but now I'm here is also one of my personal favorites. Yeah, uh, those are probably that and Yellowstone. Like I love, um, so going back to bibliography. Yeah, it is. It, it was deaf. It's a mouthful. <laughs> But I, I love that is one of my favorites because I love to sing it. I love how it captures this like frantic energy of like trying to calm yourself down from a panic attack. And then you have the ensemble who is like holding it down in the back and just going through all of these different 
you know, literary references. It's so cool. I love just the frantic energy of that song. I love performing it. I love, I, I love the emotion that's in that song. Um, and then I uh, also love Now I'm Here because it's just, it's just a fun, jaunty little song. Like everyone's having a good time and it's, it's super fun. And it's a lot of, um, a lot of other references that are just kind of thrown upside down, which is really fun. Um, Yellowstone is one of the only like longer breaks I have in the show. So I like finally get to like, just take a breath backstage and like groove to the music. Cause it's so good. So fun. <laughs> um, and, uh, over my shoulder is a song that like, if I'm going to listen to the soundtrack, like generally I'll kind of skip it. Cause it's like a little bit slower and stuff, but, uh, being able to sit next to Jessica, sing it, like it's just got, it's, it's got so much heart. And it's the first time I think Olivia starts to really see how hurt her mother is and like really hear about like kind of the struggles she went through especially there's this line where she's like think like I've went through things thank god you'll never know and I think that that's like a light bulb moment for her to be like oh yeah like I've kind of, like I've been through a lot but I haven't had these struggles before so that's another really good one that's true I had never caught that line and now I'm like oh god that is heartbreaking it's it's beautiful. I also saw a mention from uh, Tamales, the Tamales song that Ricardo Cortez sings. Um, I have to say, ugh, God, he does such an amazing job with that song, too. It's like butter. It's lovely. And when he um, was auditioning for the role, we had him sing that song. And as soon as he sang it, I was like, I, I don't think anybody else can play this part. <laughs> It was just so lovely to hear. And, you know, watching him read once he understood what was going on with the character, it was it was just like, that's it. That's that's where he's at. And so it's lovely. So shout out to Ricardo. He's not here, but <laughs> he does a wonderful job. Yes. Gentle and sweet. It's such a lovely song. I'm so glad and um, really highlights, you know, a staple in our culture across our cultures, because tamales or whatever you call them <laughs> across Latin America. They're such a staple, the, the workhorse, I think, of our food. <laughs> Anyone else have any other thoughts? Any questions? I have a question. Yes. Um, the last performances are going to be at the Mexican Heritage Theater. I'm wondering how difficult will it be to switch venues? And are there any adaptations you'll have to make? Oh, that's a wonderful question. Actually, I'm going to throw this one to Rodrigo. And we have Diane, our production manager, if Diane wants to throw her two cents in there also, because yes, we, we will be moving the show to the Mexican Heritage. Uh, ironically, I, or oddly enough, I hear that the width of our stage, the stages are the same. They're just, obviously, the Mexican Heritage is bigger, so there are there's more wing space, and it's a much deeper um uh, space there but yes karen has confirmed this <laughs> the width is the same which is so odd but uh rodrigo do you have any thoughts on that well to begin the show is going to be the same show we will make some adjustments in the technical aspect because particularly at city lights we have technology that we do not have uh, uh mixing heritage uh, just to give an example, at City Lights, we can have the hazer, which is this, this fog type that allows the people to see the beams of light. And that gives it, you know, contributes to the intimate feeling of the play. And at Mexican Heritage, because of fire restrictions, we cannot have that. So you would not see this foggy feeling um there um and just a couple of other adjustments very minor i'm sure people would not make a you know notice the difference the show again is going to be the same the music the set uh, well one more thing about the set at city lights we are able to create this texture on the floor paint it but at mexican heritage we are not able to do it but other than that, the, the show will be the same. Um, and what is beautiful about it, it's, it would be at the end of the run. And I can tell you, seeing the, the first run and, and having gone to Saturday, 
I've already seen a big difference in terms of, of, of how tight the play is. And I'm sure when they come to Mexican Heritage, it's going to be even tighter. So you're, you're on for a good ride if you go to Mexican Heritage. Thank you for more information on that, Rodrigo. And thank you for your question, Jose Antonio. You're welcome. I do have another question also. Yeah, feel may. free. So a few years ago, I went to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and I saw a play called Mother Road by Octavio Solis. Mm -hmm. And it, from what I've read about, I'm, I'm going to see this show on Friday, but from what I've read about it in the paper, it seems to have a similar theme though the journey is from west to east in Mother Road, and it's two male relatives instead of two female relatives. And I'm just curious if Mother Road was in any way an influence on the writing of this, if you would know if it had any influence on the writing of, of this show, of Monsieur I, Like Hell. I don't think it, it did. The, the play, the Monsieur Like Hell, it's actually, the, the second, well, Chiara Alegria Jude, she wrote the play 26 Miles, which is the story of Beatriz and Olivia. It's not a musical. And she wrote it in years after she took the story and, and modified it to create Miss You Like Hell. And Mother Road by Octavio Solis is much more recent. So if anything, I would give credit to Chiara, but yeah, I, I don't I don't think that, that either one uh, you know influenced the other, or maybe I, I wouldn't be able to to tell, but definitely not not Nishu like hell. Thank you. And we love Octavio, we love his work and we produce his work, and uh, I look forward to seeing his place. That's fascinating, though. I had no idea that also. Um, well, I, I wasn't. I wasn't aware of um, Octavio's work recently, but also I had no idea that Miss You Like Hell started off as just a play that Chiara wrote. That's yeah, it was called Twenty Six Mile. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's for everybody here. Check out Twenty Six Miles if you can find it. <laughs> and in one of the songs, there's kind of like homage when. Jessica, well, not Jessica, but Beatriz says, 26 miles when they're in the, uh, and I am here. That's a reference to the, to the play. Oh, well, look at that. There's a little Easter egg that we, now we know. <laughs> because that means that they are already close to Yellowstone. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, that's fun to know. <laughs> uh, anyone else have any thoughts or questions? Mm -hmm. Hey, buddy. All right. Well, if there is no other question, any other thoughts, um, then I think we're going to end it a little bit, a little bit early. You see, unless I see. I like to add something. Um, this is story again, when, when we see the story of Beatriz and Olivia, and we see that Beatriz is an undocumented woman, there sometimes we hear this narrative that there, there is some expectation that because you, you are an immigrant or because you are undocumented, you have to have a perfect life. Mm. What is really beautiful about it is that we see this character with all the complexity that there is, that it's not perfect, and it was never meant to be perfect just because she happens to be undocumented and she happens to be um, uh, an immigrant. But also, I think we also, through the play, there are these other characters like Mo and Higgins, who we usually, or I don't recall ever seeing a gay couple, a gay older couple 
on the stage celebrating love. Mm -hmm. And there's the, I mean, they're trying to get married in every single state. And Olivia says, is that legal? You know, that might raise some, some eyebrows, like, why are they doing it? And so, and then we, we see uh, Manuel selling tamales on the street. Maybe he doesn't have a permit by the public health department, right? And, and somebody would ask, is that okay? Is that legal? But I think what we learned through these stories is we might not be able to understand those, those situations or the complexity of those circumstances, but what these stories have in common is love. And we do understand love. We understand why this mother was reading her daughter's blog and she read a suicidal note and she didn't hesitate to get on her old rusty truck across the country to see her daughter. Mm -hmm. we can understand that. And we can understand that these two older fellows want to celebrate their love and want to make sure that, that, that there's, there's proof that they loved each other from high school. You know, And we see these men selling tamales, but it's not just the tamales. It's what tamales represent to him which is the deep love that he had for his wife who died of cancer. Mm -hmm. So again, when we put this story separate, we might be questioning, is this legal? Who cares? It's about love. And again, when we learn those narratives, when we change the narratives and we make it in a dignified way, people's perception change. This is not to change anybody's political points of view, but it's just to something to reflect. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that with that, I would close. Um, I, I just wanna say personally that it's been a blessing to be working in this collaboration with City Lights. I celebrate the work that City Lights does. I love their productions. I've been going to City Lights for years. And I'm just thrilled that we were able to collaborate in this amazing project. All the supporters of City Lights, thank you very much for supporting City Lights because of your support, we were also able to collaborate with City Lights. And also to all the supporters of Teatro Vision supporting artwork, uh, thank you too, because thanks to your support, we were able to create this beautiful collaboration and to work with this beautiful, amazing, talented cast and production team. So from the bottom of my heart, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what gems to be closing out on. And yes, thank you so much to our producers, Kathleen Zaretsky and Jonathan Karp. I see them right there. Thanks to you, we are able to create such beautiful pieces on our stages. And we, it just means the world to all of us here. So shout out to you too. And shout out to every single person who has come to see the show, who is planning to see the show and who is taking a chance on this amazing and moving story. Well, thank you everybody. This has been beautiful. Um, as we said before, uh, we will, we still have a weekend of shows. So it, the show is at City Lights until the 19th of this month. So please check it out. And then we will be moving to the Mexican Heritage Plaza starting from Thursday, February 23rd through Sunday, February 26th with that's from um, evenings at 8 p.m. But there will also be a Sunday matinee at 2 p.m. and a 2 p.m. matinee on Saturday, the 25th. Um, I also want to shout out that Alicia will be doing an Instagram takeover this Saturday. So if you don't follow Teatro Vision on Instagram and on Facebook. You don't follow City Lights on Facebook, Instagram. Do so now if you are able to. What are you doing? Why are you not following us? Um, but uh, Alicia will be taking over the City Lights Instagram account. And who knows, maybe later the Teatro Vision account as well or somebody else. So follow us there. Check it out. Come see the show. And thank you all so much for being here. Muchas gracias. Bye.